Hey guys, welcome back to another interesting topic. Today's topic is about Merck Synchronizer. So before going to the topic, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn your notifications on. And if you have any doubts, comment down below. I'll respond within 24 hours. So now coming to Merck Synchronizer. So why are we using a Merck Synchronizer when we have a proof flop synchronizer to synchronize it from a clock domain A to clock domain B. So why are we not going with it with the two flop synchronizer? The problem with the two flop synchronizer is that it can synchronize a single bit at a time. Okay? A single bit at a time. That is the major problem. So let us say that if we want to synchronize an n bit of data, then we require n bit two flop synchronizer. So that's a huge amount of components required. So to reduce the cost and efficiency, we are going with a MUX synchronizer. So as you can see over here, this is the diagram representation of a, a MUX synchronizer. We have a MUX, so that's the reason it's called as a MUX synchronizer. And we have a two flop synchronizers over here. So now let us discuss using this MUX first. So the MUX have two inputs. One input is fed back from the output. The output we will discuss later and one input is the data which we are going to convert from one clock domain to another clock domain so this data is coming from a clock a source domain okay so that is fed to one and we have a select line this select line is coming from an control signal enable so this enable says that when should we send the data from clock a to clock b domain so here this enable passes through a two flop synchronizer this two flop synchronizer as you can see over here we are converting the enable signal from clock a domain to clock b domain so whenever it reaches in a clock b domain then we will get our data at d1 and d1 will pass it to the output and let us say that enable is not there then we will feed back the previous data it will continue the previous data so one more important point is that we should not change the data frequently so we cannot change the data very frequently so that's the major disadvantage of a mux synchronizer so one more problem with a mux synchronizer is that we cannot know that whether the output is correct or not okay the acknowledgement is not sent back from a clock b to clock a domain so there's no handshake in it okay so this is basics about the mux synchronizer so now let us look at the timing diagrams for better understanding so in timing diagrams, we will see the following signals. So clock A is the source clock. Data is the input data which we are supplying from clock A domain. And FA is the output at Q of this flip-flop FA. And clock B, as you can see, is the another domain which we are converting to. Now FB0 and FB1 are the outputs of this flip-flop and this flip-flop respectively. And D1 is the output of the multiplexer and output is the required output that is the synchronized output. So as you can see over here, the clock A and clock B time periods are varying. So clock A time period is higher compared to clock B time period. So now let us send the data. So as you can see over here, the data was 0, 0 at first when there was no data. And now we want to send 1, 0 to the output. So to send the data, we need to send the enable signal. The output of the flip-flop A is the enable signal. So this enable signal and data will be sent to clock B domain. To do that, we need to send this enable signal and synchronize it into clock B domain. So we are sending this FA to FB0 and FB1. As you can see over here, this is the two-flop synchronizer and the output will be synchronized over here. So as you can see that our enable signal has been synchronized to clock B domain. So we got our enable signal at the flip-flop B0 and flip-flop B1. The output of the flip-flop B1 will select the 1 as output so that we can get our data from clock A domain to clock B domain. So D1 will become 1, 0 whenever FB1 will become high. And this D1 is passed to output that is we need to register our data so we are sending it to a flip-flop so this is the basics about the multiplexer synchronizer i hope this video helps you to get something about the clock domain crossing and if you have any doubts or queries 
and if you want a certain topic which need to be made in a video form uh, you can comment down below I'll respond within 24 hours and make sure you subscribe and turn your notifications on that will help me a lot and thanks for watching till then hope you have a great day